Today we have a look at the 3 best motherboards for your Ryzen 9 7950X. First I included a really premium motherboard, then a slightly lower motherboard if you don't want to spend that much and at last we have one more premium motherboard so I really have a nice range to choose from. Asus ROG Strix X670E Wi-Fi Gaming Mainboard. This is a really premium mainboard with a lot of features but it costs a lot as well. So if you have the budget for it and you really need a ton of accessories, connections and stuff like that, then this could be the mainboard for you. The first thing I really like about this mainboard is its support for 4 M2 SSDs. This means if you want to use it for a lot of storage, let's say use it for a server or you just want to use it for creative work and want to have a lot of storage, then you can put it all in there and it will be really, really fast. Additionally to this, you get three PCIe slots. So if you have a lot of accessory, let's say you have a 10 gigabit network connection which you want to put in there or something like that or a streaming card, then you can put all in there and have even one place left for your GPU. The front IO is really stacked as well. You get 10 USB 3 connections, so I don't know what you want to put in there, but you have up to 10. Then you get three Type-C connections and this is really nice because a lot of accessories today are Type-C so you can connect up to three there. And you get Wi-Fi 6E, the newest standard that is out there and if you have the router for it, it is really worth it. Especially if you don't have a LAN connection going to your mainboard. But there's one downside to this mainboard as well or rather you could say it's not as much as it could be because you only get a LAN with 2.5 GB. I really wish they would include 10 GB Ethernet here, but they didn't, so that's all you get, 2.5. In most circumstances this would be enough, but I really would wish there was a 10 GB there. And one cool feature as well, if you want to use it for your server, you get an HDMI port and a display port, so if you use it as a server and don't have an additional GPU, you can just connect to those ports as well. So all in all a really stacked board and you get one feature as well, that I didn't mention until now, but it's really worthwhile to note because in most cases if you are a creative person, you could use it in the future. You get a Thunderbolt header, which you can connect to an additional accessory, which you have to buy for about $100, but if you buy it, you can connect your mainboard with this header and get Thunderbolt support. And with this Thunderbolt support, you can connect it to many monitors which support Thunderbolt and get a range of a lot of accessories as well, so this is really nice. But there's one other thing to note as well which isn't that nice. Because you get 4 M2 slots, there are only 4 SATA slots. So if you need a lot of SATA slots, this mainboard may not be what you're looking for because you only get 4 instead of 6 or 8 like other boards. But all in all it's a great package and I would say if you have the budget and really need the best, then you can go with this board. The Gigabyte X670E Aeros Master will give you a lot of premium features. For example, you get 4 NVMe SSDs, a nice software to control your fans, with a really slick motherboard design and there's even an extensive front I.O. But let us start with the NVMe SSDs first. You get 4 NVMe SSDs, two of those are generation 5 and two of those are generation 4. So for example you could use two NVMe SSDs with generation 5 for a rate to get even faster speeds or get a duplicate so that you don't lose any data and the generation 4 could be used for your games to store them separately there because generation 4 is generally a little bit cheap. And one nice point for this mainboard as well is you get a nice heatsink for your NVMe SSDs for all four of them. And especially for the generation 5 NVMe SSDs a heatsink is really important because, because those drives kind of get really hot and if you have a heatsink those won't be a problem at all but if you don't have you have to separately purchase one, not a big problem but it looks way nicer if they have a heatsink integrated already. Then you get 10 PVM fan headers, so you get more than enough for all your fans. The first PCIe by 16 slot which you can see is generation 5 and you get all of the 16 slots. Then there are two more PCIe slots which look like 16 slots but in reality they are something else. But the great thing is they are large so you can connect anything with it but you won't get the full bandwidth. The second PCIe slot is generation 4 by 4 and the last PCIe slot is generation 3 by 2 So if you have something fast, connect to the second. And if you have something slower to connect, like a streaming card, then you can use the last slot for this. The software of the Gigabyte X670E Aeros Master is really nice as well. Especially the Aeros line gets a really nice BIOS software. 
from Gigabyte, especially if you want to have nicely tuned fans, because you can choose between different settings to set your fans. And if you are not satisfied with those settings, like me, because I want to have my a little bit slower so I don't really hear them, then you can just adjust the fan curves and this is really nicely done there. And there's a future proof feature as well. Because of the Q flash, you can update your BIOS without needing a CPU or GPU. And this is especially nice if there are newer generation of Ryzen CPUs and you don't have the old one or the old one is broken, but you want to use the main one for the new CPU, then you can upgrade it with this and it will work with the new CPUs. The design of the motherboard is really nice with a slight gaming touch, but not too much. So if you want to have a stealthy system with a little bit of silver accents, then this is the perfect mainboard for you. And generally in most PC cases, this will look really nice. The front I.O. is good, but it's not exceptional for X670E. So MSI has slightly better front I.O., but I would say it's good as well. Because you get two times USB 2, well, there are greater things of this. You get eight times USB 3, I would say this is nice. And you get two times USB-C. And especially those two times USB-C could be a little bit more because some motherboards get you up to three or four USB-Cs, and especially as they are more and more connected with USB Type-C, there could be a little bit more than two. Then you get Wi-Fi 6E. This is nice and future-proof as well, because Wi-Fi 7 should take a little bit longer to get out of there. And you get 2.5 gigabit LAN as well, which is nice for a home network. And if you have a CPU with an integrated graphics or want to get one later, then you can use the included display port and HDMI. Those only work if your CPU has an integrated GPU and you don't connect an external GPU to it. But if this is the case, then this is a great. Asus TUF B650 Plus Wi-Fi mainboard. This is a really nice budget mainboard for all the people looking for a nice and affordable mainboard, which is ITX and has all the necessary features to support your AM5 CPUs. Let's start with the M2 slots. You get three M2 slots. One of those is Gen 5 and two of those are Gen 4. So if you have a really fast SSD, let's say you use this for your main starting point or to start your games, then this is really nice because they start so fast. And you have two Gen 4 SSD slots, which you can use for a little bit slower SSD speed if you want to store your bigger games on there or generally if you want to store something else there. You get two PCIe by 16 slots and two PCIe by one slots. So the big slots you can use for a graphics card or a network card and the two small slots you can use to connect a streaming card or something else. Generally, it would be nice if you had three big PCIe slots, but two or even one will be enough for most people out there. So it should be enough. The front IO is not the most stacked IO I have ever seen because it doesn't have that much connectivity but it's enough for most applications anyway. You get four USB 2, which is really great if you want to connect your peripherals to it, like your mouse or gaming keyboard. I really wish the USB 2 would be USB 3 instead, so you had six of those, but you only get two USB 3. But there's something nice as well, because you get two USB Type-C ports as well. And this is more than most other mainboards, because in many cases you will only get one Type-C which oftentimes isn't enough, especially if you want to connect accessories and something like this. There's an HDMI and display port as well, which is really nice if you want to use it for server applications, or let's say you will just use it for your office work, then normally you won't even need an external graphics card, but you can just use the integrated in the CPU from AMD. There is Wi-Fi 6 support as well, so you get really fast. Wi-Fi is not the fast one out there, there's Wi-Fi 6E, but it's fast enough. And if you want something even faster, you have a LAN port with up to 2.5 gigabits, which you can connect as well. So all in all, it's a really nice mainboard, especially if you don't want to pay the world, but want to have nice features nonetheless. 